Good morning. It's a chilly morning here at the Kenyatta International Convention Center live at the Africa Climate Summit. Welcome to this special coverage of the Africa Climate Summit. My name is Zena Bondati and beginning today all the way till Wednesday until the end of this summit, we are here at KSCC and also at Gigiri for the Africa Climate Week keeping you up to date on what's happening, what to expect, and what's going on. So right now, if I could just show you what's happening. What's about to happen is that the official opening ceremony, President, President William Ruto will be opening that in the Tavo Ballroom, which is just down there in front of me. And uh, it's quite busy. If you can see, it's quite busy. It's a busy morning. A few government uh, officials are arriving. At least 20 presidents are expected to attend this. So that delegation you see moving around, it's uh, for the entry into the Tavo Ballroom, which is where the official opening will be happening on this other side um, you can uh, is the queue to access the KCC itself uh, those are people waiting to enter into the main building of KCC so as the day progresses that queue is getting longer and longer and longer but why is the Africa climate summit happening well Africa suffers some of the worst impacts of climate change, yet it has very little to do with climate change. And there's not a single person on the continent who can say confidently that they have not felt the impacts of climate change. If you look at East Africa and the Greater Horn of Africa, we're just coming out of the worst drought we've seen in 40 years. And that's just one of the manifestations of climate change. So with this Africa Climate Summit, what Kenya is seeking to do is bring all 55 countries of Africa together to speak in one voice, not just to talk about their impacts of climate change, but to also talk about the solutions that they as individual countries and as a continent are putting in place in order to, uh, to build the adaptive capacity of their people. And another thing that Kenya is pushing for is to have the financial mechanism within the climate space looked at. Because uh, the financial mechanism usually happens in terms of something called loss and damage. And loss and damage is when um, some, uh, losses and damage are the, the impacts, the losses you suffer as a result of climate change. For instance, when there's a drought, the homes that are swept away, the damage will be the, the the infrastructure that's lost as a result. And what these poor countries often want, the global south, is to have the north held responsible for these losses and damage because they produce, they contribute greater, greatly to climate change and have them pay for these losses and damage. But President William Ruto has, is on record saying that they're looking to change this conversation, not to throw around blame game, blaming the, north, uh, the global north for the impacts of climate change, but to bring everybody to the table and say, yes, we're in this crisis together. What do we do? How do we change this? How can we, as poor countries, access financing at a rate that does not hurt us as economies? So those are some of the conversations that we'll be following here. And at the end of the, of the, of the three days, Wednesday, a Nairobi declaration is expected. And of course, we'll be telling you the inside scoop of what this declaration says, because this declaration is what will be taken as the Africa position, which will then be taken to the COP28. But right now, I'd like to take you back to studio where Winnie Lubembe is standing by with a similar conversation to uh, we'll set the stage for the Africa Climate Summit. And then we'll see you right after that. All right. Thank you very much, Zainab. That is our sustainability editor, Zainab Bondati, who, again, is out to KICC to bring us up to speed. But what exactly is happening? Because this is a very big week uh, for Africa as a whole as we talk about the Africa Climate Summit 2023 and, of course, very important conversations that are yet to be held uh, throughout this week. And, of course, today on the show, we'll be focusing on the expectations from the Africa Climate Summit because, as we all know, climate change poses significant risks to the global community with physical effects causing substantial economic losses and Africa in particular faces severe climate related challenges including drought, desertification and increasing cyclones leading to displacement, migration and food crisis. So the continent is also disproportionately affected by the global temperature rise and is projected to experience escalating physical climate risks. And as the inaugural Africa Climate Summit, which runs parallel with the Africa Climate Week, starts today, the question is, what should we expect from this meeting? Because this is not the first time we're having a climate change summit. So the big question is, how different or what kind of an impact will this particular summit have? And what are some of the experts? expectations and especially during the last day where we'll be having the Nairobi declaration so so much to go through and to help us with that conversation this morning I am joined uh, by from my immediate left is Mohamed Ado who's the international climate policy expert power shift Africa you've been here since 6 a.m <laughs> so thank you so much for again sticking around as well for this very important conversation so good to have you this morning Mohamed and we're also joined by Uli Keita 
uh, who again, all the way from Senegal, <laughs> good to have you this morning, Executive Director, Greenpeace Africa. Uh, so good to have you again this morning. And before we just get to understand your expectations um, as, again, organizations, but also as individuals, like I said earlier, uh, this is not the first time that we're having a climate change uh, summit. We've had several COPs, uh, we've had several meetings as far as climate change is concerned. So the biggest question is how different is this particular uh, meeting and this particular um, you know, summit, and especially the fact that, again, it's being held uh, in Africa. So I'll start with you, Mohammed. How impactful or how different is this meeting? Uh, this is a very important meeting. Right. It's the first ever Africa Climate Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, in all the other summits that you've talked about, yeah. you know, those were international summits mm -hmm. where Africa was actually a guest mm -hmm. uh, of uh, when it goes to those summits. And, and those summits, you know, were largely, you know, organized, mm -hmm. uh, you know, under the international uh, climate negotiations. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the international negotiations, the way they're set up, yeah. uh, those talks are largely dominated by the historic polluters. Right. Uh, so if you look at the dialogue and the discourse, it still privileges, you know, the historic polluters who understand, you know, what is truly at stake mm -hmm. uh, because they've actually emitted the bulk of the emissions that have caused climate change, you know, yeah. three quarters of the emissions that have put us in this place uh, suffering now some of the worst impacts of climate change have mm -hmm. largely emanated from the historic polluters. Mm -hmm. And because of the historic responsibility, they've crafted the international climate dialogue mm -hmm. uh, to avoid responsibility and to shift the burden mm -hmm. uh, to the developing countries. Yeah. What we're having in Nairobi this week mm -hmm. is an inaugural Africa Climate Summit. Yeah where African interest will actually take center stage. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a summit for African leaders mm -hmm. uh, to come together and rally behind mm -hmm. an African vision for climate, energy, and development. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want us to narrow the conversation to just climate, yeah. uh, because in this continent, we're facing a number of intersecting crises. That's you true. know, we yeah. have hunger, mm -hmm. uh, we have poverty, mm -hmm. we have the impact of climate change, mm -hmm. we have the financial uh, crisis, including the, the, the rise in the cost of living, yeah. we have the debt uh, crisis. And, and so what this summit provides us is a platform for us to think through mm -hmm. an African strategic vision, mm -hmm. okay. uh, the kind that will allow us to address you know, these intersecting crises together at the same time All right. so that we can secure mm -hmm. our well-being and prosperity. So this is a big moment mm -hmm. and I hope our leaders rise to the occasion. Absolutely. I mean, for a very long time, there has been that conversation or discussion about the global north and the global south and the global south, um, sort of like blaming the global north for their contribution towards the same. And someone was saying it's, it's, it's time that we stop playing victim and also understand our position uh, in terms of what we can do to contribute um, towards the same. I mean, as much as we're contributing less, but there's something that we can do. And, and there's a whole lot of conversation about adaptation, mitigation, climate financing, loss and damage, a lot of things, um, again, that we'll be going through the entire week, uh, even as we mark the Africa Climate Summit. So I understand what you're saying. It's a very, very important meeting. Um, again, Uli, from your side, how important, how impactful uh, is this meeting? This is absolutely critical for the African continent. As Mohammed mentioned, this is the inaugural summit for yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. We usually are invited to global summits in terms of climate change, climate crisis, you know, environmental issues. Mm -hmm. But for the very first time, the African Union mm -hmm. sat down together mm -hmm. and said, we need to have some sort of a vision right. for us as Africans and how we tackle this issue. And so for us Africans and civil society organizations, this is a key moment mm -hmm. for us to rally behind our leaders mm -hmm. to see how the Nairobi Declaration will actually translate mm -hmm. in some sort of a strategy, but not just a strategy, yeah. a plan mm -hmm. that we would have accountability framework attached to mm -hmm. so we can hold people accountable mm -hmm. in terms of how we are actually facing mm -hmm. this climate crisis in our communities. Yeah. We don't want this to be just a summit of lip service mm. where we come and we meet three days and we go back, there's nothing else. We need to have a clear framework as Africa mm -hmm. on how we tackle mm. these issues. As Mohammed said, yeah. it's not about just the climate because yeah. climate change is affecting every single thing in Africa, whether it's food and security, mm. whether it's health, yeah. whether it's the well-being of even kids going to school. Mm. So when you talk about all the mechanisms put in place before, 
uh, by what we call the couple of the parties, you know, um, loss and damage and adaptation. But what, what is that actually for us Africans? How is those, are, how are those mechanisms translating into concrete mm. things for Africans to tackle this issue that we are calling climate change, which is actually affecting the everyday livelihood of Africa. every single African on, yeah. in every country on the continent. Mm -hmm. That's why we are all here. Absolutely. We want to see a clear framework mm -hmm. accompanied with a plan, mm -hmm. with resources, mm -hmm. and we want civil society organizations to be at the forefront mm -hmm. driving this agenda mm -hmm. along with our leaders. Yeah, yes. and speaking about civil society um, organizations and non-state um, actors, there's a lot of uh, complaints um, as far as not only the organization, but uh, of the summits. But again, what is, is, is happening, especially on the sidelines, um, majority of, of uh, you know, what will be happening is more from the global north. And so people are, you know, blaming even the president uh, for pushing the global north um, agenda. So we'll come to that, you know, as, as we continue with the conversation. But very quickly, um, Dr. Um, Uli, I'm still sticking with you. Uh, just to understand, of course, your participation um, is equally very important, and especially on this uh, Africa Climate Summit. So very quickly, um, just in case someone is tuning in right now and trying to understand, okay, so let's familiarize ourselves uh, with Greenpeace. Um, right uh, africa and of course your um participation and you know why it is important for you to you know also participate in the summit but just to help us really understand greenpeace uh, africa Let's yes so greenpeace there. africa is a continental non-profit organization working for the promotion of the environment okay. we are located currently in five countries mm -hmm. And um, South Africa is the, the HQ of Greenpeace Africa. And right. we are part of a global movement, actually, with uh, 55 uh, offices across the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. And in Africa, we've been working with communities for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we have uh, a national office or a regional office mm -hmm. uh, here in, in Kenya, right. in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And the whole... Um, vision that we have is to is three three pathways okay. the first one is really to build mm -hmm. this africa climate change movement right. with the youth with the women with you know the stakeholders who are really impacted by climate change mm -hmm. we want those change makers to be part of the process that we are mm -hmm. unfolding in africa right. the second one is to really influence mm -hmm. the the mindsets and and systems that people have put in place mm -hmm. to deal with climate change mm -hmm. so that we are sitting at the table and not on the menu. Okay. Africa is always on the menu mm -hmm. and now we are saying we need to be at the table. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is that we would like for us to be really working in African, we're taking in, into account African cultures, mm -hmm. our ways of doing things. So grounding mm -hmm. everything we do mm -hmm. in terms of climate change, mm -hmm. what we call African consciousness. We want things to be done using our African traditions, mm -hmm. because as we know, Africa has been living in harmony with nature forever, long right? Time. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. we, we are told to kind of leave our old ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Because of colonization, mm -hmm. you know, we are told, oh, this is not good. This mm -hmm. is now what you need to do. Yeah. And we need to go back to mm -hmm. some of those fundamentals. So unless someone sets the pace for us. On exactly. Those things, so okay. Exactly. Okay. So that all is right. what Greenpeace is all about. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. All right. Um, and, and I like the fact that um, you mentioned that it's time. We, we want a seat um, at the table. Mohammed, do you want to just expand, um, you know, on still picking on the same, on how important it is for Africa to be included uh, on the but we, can't, we, we have solutions. I mean, go to communities where, and especially those ones that have been heavily impacted by climate change, they have their own solutions. Resources might be a bit of an issue, but they know what exactly uh, is needed. So when we say we need a seat at the table, quantify that uh, from, you know, continent's perspective. Uh, let's look at it from the global perspective. Right. There are three major powers mm -hmm. that are actually effectively shaping the international discourse. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the U.S., uh, you know, effectively leading a lot at the global space. Yeah. And then you have the European Union and mm -hmm. then China, which has now emerged. Mm -hmm. These countries have strategic vision for the next 100 years. Mm -hmm. okay? And in their vision, mm -hmm. they have Africa as mm -hmm. a place where they will source cheap raw materials. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be able to source cheap labor yeah. with the brain drain that mm -hmm. we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing as a market for their finished mm -hmm. products. Yeah. And that's how they've positioned us. 
And, and the challenge we have as a continent is we've never come together to develop a long-term strategic vision for Africa. Mm. So what this, opportunity, this summit provides us is an opportunity for us to look at the crises that we're facing right. and, and develop a long-term vision for Africa, mm -hmm. the kind that will allow us to be able to address the intersecting crises mm -hmm. that we're facing. Right. Uh, unless this continent develops such a vision, will remain this, the, the source of cheap raw materials, mm -hmm. will remain uh, the dumping ground for other, you know, for products that are actually produced in other countries, mm -hmm. and, and will be the place where they will be able to continue to source cheap labor. Mm -hmm. and, and so the opportunity we have with this summit is for our leaders to think through Right. What is the vision for Africa? How do we rally the world continent behind mm -hmm. an alternative climate vision that is centered around African interest? Mm -hmm. If this summit you know, helps to prioritize and advance African interests and positions, mm -hmm. we'll have the 55 countries of the Africa Union signing on to a declaration mm -hmm. that is going to commit them to address you know, the food deficit mm -hmm. that this continent mm -hmm. is facing. Yeah. Uh, you know, this continent is unable to produce sufficient food. 85% of the food we consume, mm -hmm. you know, is imported. And, and is so sad. how do we yeah. address that Given, yeah. in, a, in, in the context of the changing climate? So mm -hmm. don't even blame the climate. Yeah. I think our investment in mm -hmm. our agricultural production yeah. capacity is limited. Mm -hmm. So we need to transform our agricultural systems so that we can be able to s produce sufficient, mm -hmm. you know, nutritious and culturally appropriate food so that we can be able to feed this continent. Mm -hmm. The second thing is about addressing the energy deficit. Mm -hmm. 600 million Africans don't have electricity. Mm -hmm. A billion Africans still depend on traditional biomass for their cooking and heating. Mm -hmm. They don't have clean cooking. Yeah. And so, and, and if you look at, you know, uh, our Pan-African industrial mm -hmm. landscape, mm -hmm. we still export raw materials. We don't have a Pan-African, you know, uh, green industrialization mm -hmm. uh, policy or approach that will allow us to add value mm -hmm. to our export. Yeah. And, and so if this summit can address those three deficits, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. food, uh, and the fact that we have you know, low value added mm -hmm. exports compared to our imports, mm -hmm. we will have helped to put this continent on a sustainable path. Okay. But that's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. To actually realize that vision, we need to attract financing. Mm -hmm. Now, the kind of financing we're looking for here isn't uh, in the billions. We're looking mm -hmm. at trillions of dollars yeah. that needs to be mobilized on an annual basis mm -hmm. to help this continent address its food uh, deficit, mm -hmm. to help this continent, you know, leave frog that energy and become green leader. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a continent with, you know, the best solar, the mm -hmm. best wind, the best geothermal. Mm -hmm. uh, and 40% and of the strategic minerals that the world is looking to exploit, to decarbonize, are found in Africa. Mm -hmm. So how do we use this Leverage immense potential yeah. to help put Africa mm -hmm. on a sustainable path mm -hmm. and help this continent live for that energy and become a green leader? Mm -hmm. I don't want a continent you know, that follows in the footsteps mm -hmm. of, of the current developed countries mm -hmm. who have developed, but in the, in the process, caused the climate crisis. Yeah. You know, the rest of us have effectively subsidized their development mm -hmm. because they, they, they polluted without facing the cost of doing so. Mm -hmm. And now we are in the midst of a climate crisis yeah. that we have to adapt to. Yeah. So what we need is a summit that helps us actually articulate an alternative vision mm -hmm. that is not going to make Africa be, join the league of big polluters. Yeah. But in avoiding, you know, joining the league of big polluters, we need to claim climate debt and reparations mm. so that the historic polluter, mm -hmm. you know, basically foots the bill yeah, for, for Africa's transition. Yeah. Uh, and, and those two things, I think, needs to come together. So we, we need to set our vision for what we do for ourselves mm -hmm. to secure our well-being mm -hmm. and, and to enhance our prosperity and, and the demands we'll make to the international community okay. so that we engage in the international discourse. Mm -hmm. We engage in as an equal stakeholder mm -hmm. with an, an advance in African interests and priorities mm -hmm. where Everybody is an equal. You know, we have, I think, about a quarter of the UN member states, mm -hmm. you know, 55 countries. Yeah. That is a big block. That's a very big but block, But if we yes. can mobilize and yeah. galvanize it to speak in one voice, yeah. we can actually shift things. And yeah. that is the opportunity we need to realize. And the president has been very key, um, you know, and, and very vocal, still speaking on the same and say, look, do not treat us as less than. Give us that equal opportunity and see what uh, we can do. So it's a very, you know, beautiful thing to see all the, the, the African countries joining together on this uh, on this summit uh, and 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 dr Uli, one will be asking so then looking at the potential that we have 
as a continent. So what is it that has been holding us um, back? And this is from the neocolonial, uh, you know, extra active activist um, point of view. What is now these things that have been holding us back? Because 55 uh, <laughs> countries um, with immense um, resources, what exactly is holding us back? I think it's the development model okay. that has been uh, given to Africa mm -hmm. um, from the colonial power to say, this is what Africa is. We will mm. come to your countries. We will extract resources. Yeah. We'll use it to develop ourselves. And you stay in this. You stay where we tell you to stay. Okay. I mean, the the neo-colonial model of mm -hmm. of development in Africa just mm. needs to be torn completely it's away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, our governments, as Mohammed said, one thing that I'm very hopeful about yeah. is that now. Africa is coming together as a block. Mm -hmm. Our governments are realizing that, mm -hmm. okay, as a national country, if I, if I take things nationally, I won't be able to advance at the mm -hmm. global level. But if I come together with mm -hmm. all of the 55 countries, mm -hmm. then we can speak as a block mm -hmm. and really do away with this neo-colonial model of extractivism, yeah. because that's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. People come to Africa because we have all the resources. We do. Yeah. They come, they extract the resources, mm -hmm. they develop themselves, mm -hmm. and we are told to just be bystand. Uh, uh, you know, we, we just stand there, we watch, mm -hmm. and we are not part of this mm -hmm. development that they're mm -hmm. taking advantage from yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the Congo Basin. Mm -hmm. This is the big the carbon, carbon sink, carbon, yes. the biggest mm -hmm. rainforest mm -hmm. after uh, the Amazon, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing to protect our biodiversity, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what is it that African governments are deliberately doing mm -hmm. to protect the Congo Basin mm -hmm. from exploitation, mm -hmm. from over-exploitation? Mm -hmm. That's an issue. Yeah. Why are we giving subsidies to these big companies who are coming day in and day out to extract mm -hmm. our resources. Yeah. Can we stop these companies? Can we stop giving subsidies? Can we stop this, this carbon tax that we are, you know, dancing around? Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. Yeah. We should stop the drilling mentality mm -hmm. and we should start to really ask polluters to pay. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that Greenpeace Africa is really campaigning about. Yeah. We have a big campaign going on, uh, which is stop drilling and start paying mm -hmm. uh, we're saying just like the government of kenya is saying yeah. you know loss and damage yes adaptation yes mm -hmm. but what invents investments can we do concretely mm -hmm. for africa mm -hmm. that is actually going to respond to our needs mm -hmm. as africans yeah. so these are some of the big things that we really want our governments to take up and say mm -hmm. no more mm -hmm. no more mm -hmm. neo-colonial development model we have our own yeah. we have our solutions we are now ready mm -hmm. as a block mm -hmm. to implement this thing mm -hmm. if you want to come you come yeah. but as an equal partner yeah. and on the terms of the africans we we since we have a strategy mm -hmm. we will tell you how we'll like to engage with you yeah that is what we are expecting yeah but the big question is then so then to want what will it take for us to first of all hold them to account and say, listen, this is what you have done, right? This is the mess that you have created. These are the commitments. There's several commitments that have been um, made over the years. And this is as far as financing. And like you said, um, rightly put, Mohammed, in trillions, um, you know, of, of, of dollars. So the big question is then, how do we hold them to account? Because I mean, even during the COP27, uh, there was a lot of hesitation here and there as far as financing um, is concerned. So what will it take for us Africa as a continent, to hold them to account and say, listen, these are the commitments that you made and you need to pay. Otherwise, uh, there's going to be trouble because we are facing the biggest brunt uh, as far as the impact of climate change is concerned. So do you want to say that? And then we'll come to Mohammed. Yes. We go and one of the outcomes of the COP27 was that they, they agreed yeah. that we would have this fund mm -hmm. for loss and damage, yeah. right? But now, as Africans, like you said, how are we going to hold them accountable? Because account, it's yeah. always promises, promises, yes. promises. And we're going to COP28 Eight, Eight, in yes, November in, in Dubai, now, yeah. what have we as Africans have come up with? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. that this summit would actually mm -hmm. help us to respond to that question you're yeah. posing. Mm -hmm. What is the accountability framework like that, that we are going to hold 
these big polluters accountable with to say, okay, mm -hmm. we came out of COP27, mm -hmm. we went to the Africa Climate Summit, mm -hmm. now we have an African framework. Mm -hmm. How are we actually going to deliver on this fund? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you recall a couple of months ago, uh, a senator in the U.S. actually said mm -hmm. that, oh, we, we need to think about who is actually mm -hmm. going to pay for yeah. that fund. Because he doesn't want, for example, the U.S. to be accountable yeah. for payment of the polluting, mm -hmm. which is controversial, yeah. right? You pollute and yeah. you actually don't want to be held accountable for payment. Yeah. And so I know it's going to be a lot of debate at this summit and also leading up to COP28. COP but yeah. Africa needs to have a clear position on this, like you said. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be paying? Absolutely. When are we going to start the implementation of this fund? Mm -hmm. And from the Africa Climate Summit, mm -hmm. Nairobi Declaration, mm -hmm. what is it that Africa is going to use as the accountability framework? Mm -hmm. That is very important. Absolutely. Mohammed, allow me to take a break because I do not want to rush you <laughs> to contribute uh, to, to, to that uh, video aspect of, of, of accountability and what does that look like. Um, you know, and just tell you to talk, say that in 30 seconds, not, won't be fair for you. Uh, so let's take that break. But of course, also when we come back, we'd want to understand. So then what are the African-led developments that look like from this summit? What should we expect? Because uh, again, Dr. Uli, like you said, and, and both of you said that we do not want lip service anymore. It's time that we see things put into action. So of course, we'll also be deliberating on the same. Uh, after the break, stay with us. The show is your world. But remember, uh, we also want to hear from you. What are some of your expectations from this very big weekend? That is the Africa Climate Summit. What are some of your expectations from the summit? hit us up on uh, our social media platforms at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And of course, we'll be going through your feedback after the break. Stay with us. This is your world. your best skin with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion now with 5-in-1 Complete Care the deeply nourishing formula prevents your skin from drying with precious cocoa butter and deep moisture for smooth and healthy looking skin step out in confidence with our most complete care from the world's number one skincare brand Imagine 10 people you know and love. Imagine if any of them needed blood immediately. This is a reality. Every 10 minutes, 10 people in Kenya need blood. Be it a mother in a maternity ward, an accident case, a surgery, or even a lifelong medical condition. These people need your help. Why don't you be their hero? Your timely voluntary blood donations will ensure our blood banks never dry up. Save a life today. Donate blood regularly at a county blood donation satellite near you. Changia Damu, Okua Maisha. Be the lifeline. Benefits of ordering with Glovo. Glovo allows you to order anything you want at the comfort and convenience of your home. Craving fried chicken, or pilau, or pizza? Easy and simple. Order on Glovo today. Glovo, order anything we deliver in minutes. With Glovo, you order anything you unataka and when you get it, una celebrate because kukuchoma inafika na wakati keki inafika ndio sherei inaanza. Order Glovo will deliver in minutes. Join the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum under the leadership of C.S. Davis Chirchir as they delve into the financing and development of the sector during the Nation Leadership Forum. Watch it live on NTV from the Kawi Complex on Tuesday, September 5th, starting from 7.30 p.m. This forum will focus on climate action financing and the green growth agenda. 
both of which will be central themes in the Africa Climate Summit 2023. Don't miss this opportunity to discover how Kenya is bolstering its energy reserves all while working towards achieving 100% grid-scale green energy by 2030. Tune in and be part of the energy revolution. Dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to double two three six five or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Uh, 35 minutes past the hour and the show today. And of course, this entire week really uh, is a very big week for us as a continent. And this is as we uh, mark the inaugural um, Africa Climate Summit, which again starts today uh, with several uh, expectations. All right. And we're asking you this morning, what are some of your expectations from this inaugural um, summit that will be happening all week? We'll have Nairobi declaration by the end of the summit. So what are some of the things that you are looking forward uh, to hear and to have uh, achieved by the end of the summit that is what we are discussing this morning right here on your world and with me in studio uh, is dr uli kater who is uh, has been rather the executive director of group peace africa since march 2023 and of course dr Kater's experience spans 21 years in the international development space uh, working on policy advocacy as well as lobbying at various levels so perfect person to have this morning as well as mohammed ado who's an international climate policy expert uh, power shift africa and again, you have been in this space for a very long time. And this is as far as, you know, on climate policy expert and an activist as well as a political um, mobilizer. And I was reading, you were sort of like an, an advocate, and especially for countries, if we can say, who are not able to speak uh, for themselves. So also perfect person to, uh, to have on the show this morning. And before we went on a break, uh, there was that question, um, Mohammed, as far as what will it take for us to hold this, um, you know, the global north? Who holds the money? the power to and, and hold them to account and say you need to actually deliver on the commitments that you've made and this is as far as loss and damage um on the continent yeah so we need to first recognize that this is a global crisis yeah. okay we we'll require international cooperation to address it mm -hmm. there's no country including our own kenya yeah. that can secure its microclimate mm -hmm. okay climate is just boundary mm -hmm. we need each other yeah. uh, to be able to actually tackle the, the, the global climate emergency. Yeah. What it would take uh, for Africa to actually secure its interest mm -hmm. is in developing a shared common position mm -hmm. that safeguards African interest, yeah. you know, prioritizes African interest, mm -hmm. uh, and allows Africans' leaders mm -hmm. uh, to be able to engage in the international discourse yes. from a position of knowledge, but also uh, in advancing African positions. Mm -hmm. What we haven't had in these many years of international climate negotiations mm -hmm. is African leaders convening at this level yeah. to be able to actually internalize what is, what is at stake mm -hmm. and, and for them to develop a shared strategic vision for yeah. the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, and so because we have this opportunity now, uh, I think the engagement mm -hmm. of Africa in the international dialogue is mm -hmm. going to be different. Okay. If you look at the rest of the world and, and particularly the big powers, mm -hmm. whether it's the US, whether it's the UK, uh, whether it's Europe, you know, Japan, Russia, each of these countries have conferences and summits with Africa mm -hmm. almost on an annual basis. Yeah. So the UK has a Commonwealth mm -hmm. uh, summit. The US had, you know, last year, the US Africa summit. Mm -hmm. Japan has tickered, you know, the Japan Africa mm -hmm. cooperation. Mm -hmm. Russia, you know, mm -hmm. has the same India. Mm -hmm. What these folks see in Africa yeah. is you know, a, as a place where they can actually be able to draw uh, a lot of strategic, you know, minerals, 
mm. cheap raw materials, mm. cheap labor, and as a market. Mm. Now that is the leverage we have. Yeah. So how about using that leverage and turn it around so mm. that it advances African mm. interest? Yeah. So if, if the rest of the world needs our strategic minerals and we have 40% of the minerals mm -hmm. that are needed to decarbonize the global economy, yeah. how about developing mm -hmm. the industrial plants, let's say in Congo, and yeah. creating a club of nations mm -hmm. that produce you know, strategic minerals and call it Kinshasa Club, mm. where you can pull power yeah. uh, within that collective group right. so that you can negotiate mm -hmm. favorable terms yeah. for the minerals that you'll be selling to the world. Mm -hmm. And you won't sell them in their raw form and, mm. and, and import later yeah. the finished product, product like the battery or the solar panel. Mm -hmm. You will produce them in Congo. All right. We can aggregate you know, at a regional level yeah. and look at our comparative advantage mm -hmm. so that this continent mm -hmm. can invest in a pan-African you know, industrial policy Mm -hmm. where we add value to our raw materials before we export. Okay. If we became the producers mm -hmm. of the strategic minerals that are needed to decarbonize the world, mm -hmm. Africa can easily turn out to be the renewable energy superpower. Mm -hmm. You know, we've missed out on the you know, fossil fuel powered yeah, industrialization. Yeah. Uh, we can't play catch up following in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. We need to leapfrog mm -hmm. you know, that path and lead the world mm -hmm. uh, in the 21st century yeah. by providing mm -hmm. the energy that will power this century. Mm -hmm. So this is a strategic opportunity that the continent has. Oh, yeah. We seize it. Mm -hmm. At the point of independence uh, and, and throughout that period when the West was colonizing Africa, mm -hmm. We were the, you know, the bread basket, not mm -hmm. just for our continent, but right. also for the colonizers. Yes. Yeah. That is how this continent was set, mm -hmm. so that we can produce food mm -hmm. for ourselves and for the rest. Mm -hmm. Today, mm -hmm. we import 85% of, of our food. Yeah. We've now become a basket case. So from being a, you know, uh, the bread basket to the basket case. Yeah. And, and this is because we failed to invest in our agricultural policy. Mm -hmm. uh, we failed to transform our food systems. Mm -hmm. And if we now prioritize feeding Africa and actually produce food mm -hmm. that this continent requires, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at our agricultural sector now, we produce food that we don't eat so that we can export can to export. earn a foreign exchange, yes. to import yes. other foods that we require and other products that we require. And yet we have the favorable conditions. For now you have the best arable yes. land in the yes. world. Yeah. You have the best arable land in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you have a very youthful population. Yeah. How about you prioritize feeding mm -hmm. Africans first mm -hmm. and then exporting yeah, then the, export surplus the surplus okay. rather than actually being dependent on producing things you don't consume mm -hmm. and then importing export the thin. The, yeah. Yes, that, that we, really need. we need. Yeah. So okay. we need to turn that around so that mm -hmm. we service African interests first mm -hmm. and we build our power mm -hmm. around food mm -hmm. and around energy. Mm -hmm. In the absence of food sovereignty mm -hmm. and energy and particularly renewable energy yeah. sovereignty mm -hmm. will be dependent on external on powers. external powers and, and th that should not be um, the case. So what you're saying is leverage on the power that we have so that we're able to sort of like negotiate um, exactly. better and be treated as equals and not less than because we're depending on again crowns that, that sometimes I, I had you refer given. to this yeah. idea that mm -hmm. let's not play victimhood, let's not mm -hmm. finger point. Mm -hmm. But there's an underlying fact that yeah. cannot be negotiated away yeah. that we have differentiated the responsibility for the climate problem. Okay. The continent of Africa that is home to 17% of the global population mm -hmm. accounts for less than 4% of the emissions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't you know, operationalize mm -hmm. the important equity principle mm -hmm. that our countries negotiated in 1992, yeah. that we will address climate change mm -hmm. by taking into account the common but differentiated responsibility between countries yeah. and their respective capability, mm -hmm. There is no way yeah. we'll be able to deliver, to deliver. sufficient action mm -hmm. that meets what science says is required. Okay. So let's protect equity and justice mm -hmm. and demand of others mm -hmm. what is fair. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Dr. Udi. So, so then what, what will it take uh, in terms of the African-led developments? And, and, and what we're saying, and this is our expectations um, from this summit, and, and I was just discussing this earlier on and saying, is it fair for us to, first of all, have high expectations <laughs> from this summit? Because again, these are our heads as, as, as Africans coming together and looking at some of the various ways um, you know, that we can come up with solutions for our problems so that we have um, better negotiating <laughs> terms. And this has come uh, COP28. So what are some of these African-led uh, developments that you think, right, as, as Greenpeace Africa and as Dr. Uli as well, um, that we need to have uh, come end of this week? And this is from the Africa Climate Summit. Yes, I think we have the solutions. We have 
the solar. So we have the sun, yes. we have the wind, mm -hmm. we have geothermal, yes. we have the Congo Basin. Yeah. I mean, we have everything, everything and we have the we human need. resources. Yeah. That's something that I would like to really mm -hmm. also emphasize yeah. on. Our youth, you know, mm -hmm. Africa is the most populous. Mm -hmm. We have the young, we are yeah. the youngest uh, yeah. continent mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 75% of our population mm -hmm. is under the age of 25, yeah. according to the African Union and all the reports. Yeah. So we have the youth, mm -hmm. they, they have the knowledge, mm -hmm. they have the technology, so we can use that population, mm -hmm. that demographic, yeah. to really harness what we'd like to do mm -hmm. with climate change. Right. That's a very, very important um, aspect that our leaders first of all have to take into account. Okay. So if we're talking about moving away from the fossil fuel mm -hmm. um, industries and, and going into mm -hmm. uh, transitioning into renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So if you have the human resources and you have the natural resources, mm -hmm. why are we not then leapfrogging okay. right yeah. into renewable energy? Mm -hmm. I know it's, uh, it's going to cost, the investment is a lot. Mm -hmm. But is not is it not worth it mm. as investing in renewable energy, energy right energy. now? Mm -hmm. We are sitting with the fossil fuel industry, which we know has caused all of the issues that we see mm. as ripple effect yeah. in our environment in Africa. Mm. So it means that model does not work. Okay. So Africa now has the chance to really change mm -hmm. that model of development. Mm. So how do we harness mm -hmm. into our young demography, into our natural resources? Mm -hmm. We can, with this summit, start yeah. already to have a common positioning, like mm -hmm. uh, um, Mohammed said. Yeah. If we come as 55 strong countries to say to the global world, mm -hmm. to say, okay, we are an important key player mm -hmm. in the, the climate change yeah. crisis, right? Yeah. We have the resources, all the resources, whether mm -hmm. human or natural. Mm -hmm. Now, this is our position. Mm -hmm. We can, for example, mm -hmm. get rid of um, the extravism licenses mm -hmm. that we are issuing to these big companies day in, day out. All right. We can explore our oil and gas, mm -hmm. but in very durable manner. Because mm -hmm. right now what we're doing is not sustainable. Yeah. It's just distracting, dis distracting our communities. Mm -hmm which is leading to food insecurity, mm -hmm. to public health issues, mm -hmm. to displacement of people mm -hmm. from their communities to the urban areas, which mm -hmm. are also overpopulated. Mm -hmm. So you have this exodus of people mm -hmm. because of climate change. Yeah. So how can we come with a framework, mm -hmm. like I said, a f a f an accountability framework mm -hmm. to say, you know, this is what we are all about. Mm -hmm. Either you accept or you or don't, not. but this yeah. is our pathway. Yeah. We can mm -hmm. and we should and, and we, we should, have, yeah. should have the courage mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And we Africans, individuals, civil society, you know, people, we're saying to our governments, mm -hmm. we support you, mm -hmm. we're behind you on this mm -hmm. because we know this is important for all of us. Yeah. Climate change is a global issue, mm -hmm. but individually, we cannot manage our mm -hmm. microclimate. Yeah. We need all of us to come together as mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So we do have the power, we do have the resources, we do have the natural resources. Mm -hmm. Now we should just harness act. That. Yes. We need to harness that. Okay, yes. but then again, so talking about the individual countries, because again, like we said, 55 countries strong enough to really push their agenda um, so that we put uh, a continent at, at, at the forefront. But can we talk about how then individual countries can, can chime in? Because we, we always talk about building resilience, you know, and adaptation and all those things. And I'm going to ask um, a case of South Africa, which again has been um noted as one of the biggest contributors right uh in in, in the in the continents and, and this is africa so the biggest question is do you think they have been proactive enough and this is as far as building resilience and what are some of these other countries uh you know in the continent um do dr uli and then i'll come back to Mohammed. yeah i don't think they have been doing enough yeah um south africa is the most industrialized country mm. in, africa, in africa but yet yeah. the 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 most polluting country in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the, this, this hunger mm -hmm. for fossil, uh, fossil fuel. fuel industry. Yeah. They are, it's such a 
powerhouse in mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And communities are really suffering from this. Mm -hmm. And we as Greenpeace, we have an office in South Africa mm -hmm. and we work with communities. Yeah. And the cry of the communities are, we need to transition. Mm -hmm. And it requires commitments mm -hmm. from the government. Yeah. Not only the government is supposed to have uh, an enabling environment for people to be able to invest. Mm -hmm. So if you want the private sector to come in, which we need the private sector to come in and support us mm -hmm. in this transition of um, renewable energy, mm -hmm. the, we, they, we need to then have reforms. Mm -hmm. We need to have regulatory systems which would make it easy for yeah. a private sector to come and support mm -hmm. our communities with all these brilliant mm -hmm. projects that they have yeah. in terms of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. But the commitment is lacking mm -hmm. because the big corporations have the money, they have the power, they have a big lobby, mm -hmm. you know, and so the poor communities are at the detriment of these big companies. Mm -hmm. And big so how do yeah. we um, at the governance level, mm -hmm. how do we as, as African countries really mm -hmm. have reforms mm -hmm. at those levels to really have um, the uh, legislations that would enable, mm -hmm. for example, the participation of equal friendly or green entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are willing to invest in yeah. countries mm -hmm. and also see return on their investment through uh, maybe uh, you know, the reduction of their taxes. Mm -hmm. Instead of giving subsidies, subsidies to these big corporations, why not invest mm -hmm. in uh, supporting these uh, private sector companies mm -hmm. who are all about the protection of the environment? Yeah. And, and, and have and amazing they, ideas yes. uh, on how to do so as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need countries like South Africa to mm -hmm. lead the way. Okay. Um, you have good examples. Mm -hmm. Kenya is a good example, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Um, I, for me, Kenya is really... Um, walking the talk in terms of the environmental protection, you see the development in Kenya and you also see how the government, the people are really trying to preser preserve the environment. Yeah. We have a goal, 15 billion trees? trees. Yes. <laughs> to grow trees. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you have many countries in East Africa mm -hmm. who are actually trying to do, uh, you know, to be eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. But we need um, investments mm -hmm. uh, at a very high scale. Okay. As Mohammed said, trillions of, of dollars mm -hmm. need to be invested in some mm -hmm. of these uh, mechanisms for us to really leapfrog yeah. um, into the, the, the renewable energy and really, pathway yeah. that we would like to so see. So we don't talk about, I mean, there's a lot of conversation again last year from COP, and, and this is as far as phasing down, uh, you know, versus phasing out. Um, so I think it's time we sort of like you're saying, um, Dr. Uli, leapfrog, because some of these things we don't necessarily have to talk about, oh, let's, let's, let's just phase down as we mm -hmm. <laughs> think about some of these other ways. All right, Mohammed, do you want to contribute again yeah. to the same in terms of building resilience? as well and our contributions as uh, different African countries because we have different resources uh, that will enable us to do so. I think we first need to recognize mm. that you cannot be able to adapt mm. without having you know clear early warning yeah. uh, information. Mm. Uh, this continent has about a sixth of the world meteorological stations. Mm -hmm. Now unless we inv invest in our meteorological you know capacity mm -hmm. the opportunity for us to be able to provide you know reliable you know, forecast. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be realized. Yeah. And, and once we invest and we have, you know, a better understanding of the climate risk and uncertainties that mm -hmm. we face, mm -hmm. what we need to do is integrate those better mm -hmm. into our planning, mm -hmm. include, including, you know, what we plant, when we plant, mm -hmm. all those important decisions yeah. that our small scale, you know, farmers make on a daily basis yeah. will be better if we had given them, you know, prior information mm -hmm. as to what, you know, the weather patterns is going to look like. Yeah. Uh, and so an investment that provides them sufficient early warning right. that is also reliable mm -hmm. to help inform their livelihood decisions. Mm -hmm. What we lack in this continent is that bit of information. And okay. then the second yeah. thing yeah. is... I mean, we have, what, 37 radar, yeah. uh, right? In, in the whole continent. Yes. And, and, and that can be right. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, yeah. you know, you have to have an understanding of what the climate risks are. Mm -hmm. And those risks need to be downscaled mm -hmm. at a national level yeah. to help a community in Kenya to be able to make a choice depending on how well the rains will do or not. Mm. And then the second thing is, you know, we need to actually elevate adaptation. Okay. If you look at the context in which we're in, mm -hmm. we're still talking about how Africa will mitigate or avoid emissions. Mm. If that we're accountable for only less than 4% yeah. of the emissions, yeah. 
and we're suffering first and what's the impact of climate change Mitigation and our not, people are not yeah. very well informed mm -hmm. how about we elevate adaptation, adaptation and, yeah. and and help this continent drive the conversation around adaptation mm -hmm. uh, in the in the international climate dialogue they, there are negotiations around you know defining a global goal on adaptation around mm -hmm. doubling adaptation finance mm -hmm. when it comes to mitigation you and i understand very well that we're working to hold global heating to below 1.5 degrees yeah. above pre-industrial levels. Yeah. We know we have a global goal to, you know, to hit, reach net zero or z real zero mm -hmm. by 2050. Yeah. What is the equivalent mm -hmm. goal mm -hmm. for adaptation? Yeah. We don't have an we understanding have. of that. Yeah. And, and, and so what would be important for us as a, as, as a continent mm -hmm. when we talk about mm -hmm. you know, climate impact and climate threats yeah. is, is to actually work towards what it will take mm. to safeguard mm -hmm. you know, our small scale farmers yeah. and transform our agricultural and food system mm. so that there we can be able to adapt to a change climate. All right. And I mean, when we're talking about adaptation, I think this, there also needs to be a conversation around maladaptation um, yep. as well, because yep. we've seen countries who have suffered. Yes, focus was always on adaptation, but then again, maladaptation is, is, is you know, that lacked and so many countries have suffered uh, from the same. But that is a conversation for another day. I can see our time is far much spent, and I'm just going to ask. So after all is said and done, right, we have laid out foundation. We have seen some of the areas that um, how powerful Africa as a continent is uh, in, in terms of when we come together there's so much that we can do to secure our place at the table and not uh, just get <laughs> uh, what Dr. Uli was talking about um, you know earlier on so so the big question is then and I'll start with you Mohammed so then for you as an individual what are some of the conversations that need to be held that need that that needs to be had and and even as we look forward to the Nairobi declaration what are some of those things that you expect to see uh, and to come out from the continent Let's look back to, you know, the late 50s, early 60s, okay. at the founding of the Organization of African Unity. Mm -hmm. You know, the Nyereres, you know, the Nkrumahs, mm -hmm. the Sankaras mm -hmm. came together mm -hmm. so that they can actually free this continent right. from colonizers. Yeah. And, and they did that by building Pan-African Unity. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And that is what helped in the self-determination of the mm -hmm. continent. Mm -hmm. We're now facing an existential threat mm -hmm. from climate change. Mm -hmm. Can our heads of state and our leaders, you know, become the Nkrumahs, mm. uh, the Nyereres, the Lumumbas of this generation? Yeah. Who will decolonize, you know, climate, energy and development mm. and service mm -hmm. an Africa-owned and Africa-led narrative yeah. that speaks to African realities, mm -hmm. African needs mm -hmm. in a way that we can safeguard, mm -hmm. you know, our food, our energy, mm -hmm. our, our industrialization mm -hmm. and help put this continent on a path to prosperity. That's right. a big question. It's not about a summit or a mm -hmm. declaration. Mm -hmm. Have you truly internalized mm -hmm. the threat that this continent That's faces? Okay. Okay. That majority of our population mm -hmm. isn't even aware of. Okay. The, the, there is a certain contestation where the rest of the world, mm -hmm. particularly the industrialized world, and I'll take the example of Europe, you know, in 2021, mm -hmm. during the Glasgow Climate Summit, COP26, mm -hmm. yeah. one of the, the two decisions that were reached were to face down mm -hmm. coal, uh, that was one. Mm -hmm. And the second one was to end fossil fuel financing. Yeah. But right after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, Europe tend to turn into Africa mm -hmm. to become its gas station. Yeah. So they forgot about the decision to face down yeah. fossil fuels. Yeah. They forgot the decision to end fossil fuel financing. Mm -hmm. And they only thought about how they can secure the immediate energy yeah. needs. And so they wanted to lock Africa mm -hmm. onto a gas uh, yeah. path that yeah. would have left us with stranded assets. Mm -hmm. What we want to say loudly and clearly to mm -hmm. our leaders, mm -hmm. don't fall for this. Okay. Let's not lock ourselves onto a pathway that is going to result into more climate harm, yeah. lead us into st uh, stranded assets, mm -hmm. less leaf frog, mm -hmm. and lead the world mm -hmm. in the energy revolution. Okay. This can be the 20, this, uh, the, this can be the African century. I see. And, I see. and we can turn this yeah. continent to be a renewable energy superpower. Yeah. And that is the opportunity that they can seize mm -hmm. over this coming week. Absolutely. All right. And Dr. Uli, again, what are some of the things that you absolutely need to see by the end of the week uh, from the Africa Climate Summit? Yes, so for our leaders, as Mohammed said, mm -hmm. to really echo mm -hmm. that Africa is a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. We no longer will accept this destructive extremism mm -hmm. development model. Yeah. We are done with that. Mm -hmm. Africans will no longer accept to be the dumping site mm -hmm. of all 
the pollution yeah. that is happening in the world. Mm -hmm. We have the youth, we have the natural resources, mm -hmm. we have the people mm -hmm. and the techno technological know-how. Mm -hmm. We have the means to be really uh, at the forefront of the fight against this climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And so we want our leaders to come up with a framework mm -hmm that is going to be implemented by the people in yeah. Africa yeah. and driven by the people of Africa. Mm -hmm. And we need to be really, really courageous mm -hmm. and say to the world, no more. Yeah. We are done. Mm -hmm. And Africa mm -hmm. is awake. Mm -hmm. The youth are awake. Yeah. We are not letting this go anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about our life. Mm -hmm. um, climate change is a threat multiplier. Mm -hmm. This is causing massive famine, mm -hmm. food insecurity, mm -hmm. um, immigration. I mean, you, ne you name it. Our development is depending on this climate right. issue. Yeah. And so we are no more going to accept mm -hmm. to be used mm -hmm. for our resources to be exploited to the detriment of our community. Absolutely. And we need a roadmap. Mm -hmm. We are with our governments mm -hmm. and we are there. Mm -hmm. We will be holding them accountable. Yeah and uh, the implementation of the Nairobi roadmap yeah. will be, mm -hmm. of, be done with oversight with mm -hmm. civil society organizations. So mm -hmm. we are going to mm -hmm. really hold we have everybody. Eyes. Yes, we yeah. have our eyes on <laughs> our them. eyes on you. Yes. Okay, all right. And the bottom line is do not let us down because yes. it will be such a shame to have such an important meeting and not come up with something um, you know, substantial and tangible. All right, thank you so much to both for your contribution, Dr. Uli uh, Keita, Executive Director, Greenpeace Africa. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoy your time in Kenya uh, the, the entire week. Uh, and of course, uh, Mohamed Adu as well, International Climate Policy Expert, Power Shift Africa. Africa. Thank you so much. Such an important conversation this morning. And again, conversation that will continue throughout the week. Uh, and this is as far as the Africa Climate Summit 2023 is concerned under the theme Driving Green Growth and Climate Financing Solutions for Africa and the World. And like I said, when we started the show, our team uh, is at KICC, uh, and that is uh, our sustainability editor. That is Dana Bondati, um, you know, is over there uh, together with our group editorial director, Joe Ageo, um, leading a team very passionate about environment and climate change um, as well. So be sure to, again, stay tuned to NTV for the rest of the day because we have a wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the same. But for now, we end here on Your World. We're taking a break, but of course, when we come back, we'll cross over to KICC. So have yourselves a lovely day ahead. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place, for another conversation on climate change. So see you then. Thank you.